we're going to spend some time doing work in section 7.5. Work, every pun intended, for us is going to be this integral. Work is going to be the integral of a force function over a specific interval. Uh, we should make that an x, f of x dx. <clears throat> Typically speaking, work is force through distance. And sometimes if you have a variable force, if your force is not constant, then to find the work done, you're going to have to integrate. Um, a nice, simple example of finding a force is, or finding the work done is with a spring. So let's take a look at some of those real quick. And I think I might want to do kind of a warm-up example of a spring first before we... Uh, um, now nah, let's see. Do f of x. So the force required to stretch a spring from its natural length. So typically speaking, you have a spring. Maybe there's a bit of a little weight here at the bottom, etc. But when you let it hang, it's going to stretch itself to a natural length. Now you can pull on that and stretch it even farther. But stretching it beyond its normal length is going to require some force. So that force is going to be proportional to the length beyond its normal length where you stretch it. So if this is its normal length and you want to pull it down to here, that distance is x. So the force required is proportional to that length. Suppose you apply a 15 kilogram force to stretch a, sp a specific spring one extra meter. Well, um, let's see, what's that? Uh, then that tells us K is 15. And then we can rewrite our function as F of X equals 15X. And so that would be the variable force that you need to apply um, in stretching, this, stretching that spring. Let's take a look at a problem like number six. A force of 250 newtons stretches a spring 30 centimeters. So let's do a couple things for this one. First of all, in number six, our force is 250 newtons. And annoyingly, they tell us that the distance that it stretches things, x is uh, 30 centimeters. 30 centimeters. Well, I think to keep things consistent and clean, we should convert that from centimeters to meters. Does anyone know how many meters? Good. 0 0.30 meters. 3 tenths of a meter is 30 centimeters. Now, between these two, we can figure out our constant of proportionality here. We need to figure out what k is. So 250 equals 0. Point, or k times 0 0.30. So if I divide both sides by 0. 0.3, I get 20, 250 divided by 0. 0.3. Better yet, 2,530 over 3. That's our constant of proportionality. So that's going to help us figure out how much work is done in stretching our spring. Let me rewrite our force function then. Force is k times x. In this particular case, it's going to be 2,500 divided by 3 times x. Let me get on the screen there. There. So that's our force function. 2,500 over th or 3 times x. All right, let's get back to question 6 and look at the rest of it. How much work is done in stretching the spring from 20 centimeters to 50 centimeters? So when I read it, it's something in 0.2 meters to 0.5 meters. Well, we can integrate this. Let's do that. So that's going to be the integral from 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 of 2,500 over 3 times x dx. Take out the 2,500 over 3. 
when you integrate x, what do we get? x squared over 2. So let's just go right away to the antiderivative. x squared over 2. That's going to come out as a 6. So I'll be 2,500 over 6 times 0.5 squared minus 0.2 squared. Something looks wrong. Does this look wrong to somebody else? What bothers me is that we're going to get a negative solution. And I wonder if I should have used a negative x here because you're pulling it down. Let's see, how can we reconcile that? Because we are going to get a negative number. That's going to be 0.25 minus 0.4. That's going to be negative, negative 0.15. Uh, what's... Oh, is it 0.04? Oh, okay, cool. Phew. All right, let's do, let's do a little bit of cheating here in terms of finishing this up. What I'm going to do is 0.25, or excuse me, 0.5 squared minus 0.2 squared. All right, gives me 0.21 times 2,500 divided by 6. And let's just hit the math key, answer to fraction. So I end up with 175 over 2. Yay. Now what are the units going to be? Does anyone know what the units should be for a problem like this? Yeah, you're going to have Newton meters. Force is, or excuse me, work is force through distance. So force times distance, you'll end up with Newton meters, which is a common unit for units of work. Some other common ones that you'll see are foot pounds. And when the units get really big, ton miles would be another one that you could see when the units get, like I said, really, really big. Okay, good deal. Um, how are we looking on problem number six here? Just a little bit of work with the setup here. Uh, I'm probably not going to try and confuse you like I, I think the book did. I don't know if they're trying to confuse you, but uh, I didn't like that they gave you units in centimeters because you have to convert to meters. Um, not that I don't think you can do it. It's just a detail that I don't want you to overlook. <laughs> What's that? Doable. It's doable, but you know, on a test, I don't want you to lose a point because of something silly like that. So, all right. It's a couple years ago that they pulled off kind of a, a crazy stunt. Uh, Red Bull sponsored this jump. Felix, what was his name? Uh, uh, Felix, somebody. He jumped from the edge of space and parachuted down. Wow, Felix Baumgarten, that's his name. Felix Baumgarten, I'm pretty sure that's his name. Wow. <laughs> At one point, he was traveling faster than the speed of sound. So he broke the sound barrier. He was a human missile. Just crazy. No, thank you. It took over 300 engineers and mathematicians to help do all the calculations and build this thing and get it up into orbit. So they spent a lot of money on this. Uh, he jumped out with a spacesuit and a parachute. Yeah, he's on the edge of space. So, wow, crazy. Uh, now, he... Uh, I'm sure they had uh, an area uh, where they thought he was going to land, um, but, man, there, there's one other guy that did it, 
he didn't have nearly as sophisticated stuff. Uh, both of them almost died because they were spinning so fast out of control, and they almost didn't reel it in. Man, can you imagine that? Looking down there? Yeah, there better be one on the ground waiting for him. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Felix, come on, go, we're waiting for you. All right, uh, man, I just, I couldn't imagine doing that jump. All right, I'm giving you 10 more seconds here, Felix, and then we're going to fast forward the video. Uh, five, Felix, you're not listening to me. Uh, although, in fairness, I think I'd probably take my time, too. All right. Uh, yeah, there we go. Man, go ahead. Yeah, it is crazy. I just, man, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine doing something like that. All right. Uh oh, he's gone. So, I think they they lost uh, video for a while. <laughs> Woohoo! Getting vertigo just standing here, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, so for a while he was spinning out of control, and eventually they did find him, or he did pull out of it. Um, but, anyways, did he, I'll let. Did he have to pull the Yeah. I imagine it was under his control. I think they had a second Yes, I think he did. Might, maybe he made it pass out for a while. Yeah, I think I remember something about him being on the edge of blacking out. Yeah. All right. So we're going to do something uh, a little bit simpler than <laughs> jump out of that spacecraft. And let's, let's figure out about how much work would be done to carry his spacecraft into orbit. How much work would you need to prepare for? And then, of course, by extension, you know, how much energy are you going to have to plan for? So, uh, let's see. So, this is going to be problem 12-ish. All right, we're not going to do exactly problem 12. We're going to modify it. The Red Bull spacecraft that, he, uh, that they put into a 25-mile high orbit, 25-mile <coughs> high, was or weighed 2,900 pounds. All right, so yeah, a little bit, a heavy car. Now, I'm going to simplify Newton's law of gravity down to this. The force of gravity depends on your distance from the center of the Earth. So we're going to forget the m1 times m2 times gravity divided by the distance squared. We're just going to write it this, a constant divided by x squared. Now just as a quick reminder here for you, roughly speaking, the diameter of the Earth is 8,000, so the circumference would be 4,000. Or not the circumference, the radius would be 4,000. So 4,000 miles from the center of the Earth. And what that's going to allow us to do is figure out what the constant is, constant of proportionality. So it's going to be C divided by 4,000, which is your distance to the center of the Earth, to the surface of the Earth. And that distance and this constant combine to create a force of 2,900 pounds. And I guess I don't need to put in the units there. I'm going to ignore them in a minute. So that's going to give us a really big constant here, right? When you solve for C, you're going to get 2,900 times 4,000 squared. Basically 16 million here is C. My suggestion for you here is so let's do this in scientific notation. So 2,900 times 4,000 squared. And that's just going to give you a nice number in scientific notation. There you go. 4.64 E10. So 4.64 E10. Now, I'm not really a fan of you just reading it off your calculator like this. I'd want you to write it as 4.64 times 
10 to the 10th power. So that's our constant here. Great. That allows us to rewrite our function as f of x equals 4.64 times 10 to the 10th over x squared. So that's the force function. And now we got to figure out how much work is done to put that in a 25 mile high orbit. So we're going to integrate that. So it's going to be the integral from something to something. 4.64 times 10 to the 10th over x squared dx. But here's the million dollar question. What are the limits of integration here? Remember where you're starting and where you're ending. You're starting at the surface of the Earth and you're going up 25 miles. So it's not 0 to 25. It's, it's 4,000 to 4,025 because you're starting out at the surface of the Earth which is 4,000 miles away from the center and you're going up 25 miles. So 4,025. Nice. Now, a lot of these are just big numbers. The actual calculus part is not too bad, I hope. So 4.64 times 10 to the 10th. The integral from 4,000 to 4025. Uh, let's call it x to the negative 2 dx. Okay, looking better. Uh, now when we find the antiderivative here, that's going to be 4.64 times 10 to the 10th times... It's going to be x to the negative 1 over negative 1 between these limits. Now, maybe you're fast enough and good enough to do this in your head. Great. No problem. Um, but I like to remind you what you're doing. You're adding 1 to that exponent and dividing by that same exponent. It does clean up. I'll take the negative here. I'll put this down. I'll get 4.64 times 10 to the 10th. You know, I'm starting to like that E10 notation better. <laughs> Maybe we should go back to that. Uh, the negatives here times 1 over x. So here. If you play around with this, what you'll end up with is, let's see. I don't want to do that. Um, uh, negative 4.64 e10 times 1 over 4,025 minus 1 over 4,000. Uh, I'm trying to remember how I simplified that. I think... going to be 25 over the product of these two things, or minus 25 over the product of these two things. Um, mm -hmm. Minus 4.64 e10 oh, times negative 25 over 4,025 times 4,000. It's a lot. Mm. Now the negatives are going to cancel each other out. I'll get some more cancellation here. 25 is going to go into uh, 4,000, um, 160 times. So I'll end up with 160 times this, times 4,025. So here we go. I'll end up with 4.64. Um, E10 divided by 644,000. What are the units that go along with this thing? What units have we been working in all along? Part of it you should know. Miles. Um, so you've got 
pound miles. If you want to clean that up a little bit, um, we can convert miles to tons. So 4.64 E10 over 644,000. This is uh, pound miles. If I want to convert uh, from, my, from pounds to tons, there's one ton in 2,000 pounds. So if I divide by 2,000, I'll end up with 2.32 uh, E7 over 644,000 ton miles. That's a lot of work. That's an awful lot of work. All right. I'm not going to ask you to become really an expert with these kind of simplifications or, or whatever at the end. It's fine at this point to just give me a numerical answer. Um, I don't know, just an OCD thing that I was trying to make that a nice fraction. The part that you should concern yourself with is this part up to here. And then maybe giving me a, a decimal answer at that point. How are we looking on problem number 12-ish? Doing all right there? Um, you know, there's at some point that you have to, um, um, that, that you're not going to need it. Uh, and I don't know how high up that is, but it looked like they had him in orbit. Now, uh, there's a diminished return, you know, depending on, the, the problem that you have with spaceflight is, the higher you want to go, you need more fuel. But more fuel is more weight, so then you need even more fuel. The workaround for that is to have a multi-stage rocket, so you can jettison a lot of that weight. Um, but you need increasingly larger amounts of fuel to get higher and higher off the ground. So you have to be careful about how you design these things. Yes? Okay. Yeah, because or orbit starts at 60 miles, and I think he was like 25 miles, right? Have to be orbit in the Earth. Okay. He was this All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, but he's still hats off to him. Yeah. I mean, the, the guy. I, I, I don't know. Is is that is that craziness or is it bravery? Maybe a little of both. Um, I wouldn't do it. Crazy brave. Crazy brave. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Okay, uh, anything else on problem 12 this year? You're all right with those? We're going to start doing work in another variety where we're going to start pumping water into or out of various vessels. So that's going to be our next form of work, work problems. Yeah, I think I got some of these, um, at least some of the figures that we're going to need on the handout. If you'd like to borrow a ruler to help you out with some of these things, um, I don't know. I seem to have an ever dwindling supply, but I do have uh, a bunch here. Feel free to use. Uh, we'll start with problem what I call it, 15-ish. So it's kind of one of your homework problems. It's a friendly one to start out with because we're going to um, uh, give it our own dimensions. It'll be similar to what you have in the homework. Uh, so it's going to look like this. Uh, let's give it some other dimensions here. Now, I'm not going to use centimeters. Let's use meters. Give it a meaningful distance here for our, our box. Um, let's say it's four meters tall, six meters wide, and eight meters deep. So this is our box, 
and want to figure out um, how much work is done pumping water out of the top edge of this box. And we want to empty it halfway and then all the way. So we'll take a look at both of those. Now, the thing to keep in mind when you're working on this is this, um, that our work equals force times the distance. So there's going to be two parts to our calculation here that we're going to have to work with. Uh, we're going to have to work with um, the force and then figure out an expression for the distance. All right. We're going to go back to kind of a familiar strategy here. I'm going to cut a slice through my region. And basically this slice kind of represents one little box of water. Now some trivia that you'll need to know, and I will furnish you with on exams, but you're going to memorize it soon enough anyways, is the density of water is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. Oops, per cubic foot. Let's, let's see if we can't calculate the force required in moving this thing. So I'm going to regard this corner as being our origin, and this is going to be the y direction here. So if this is the y direction, can somebody, somebody tell me the thickness of this? It would be dy. Good. So that's going to be a dy thickness. Now our force is going to be proportional to the mass of the water times, or the density of the water times its volume. So it's going to be the rho here times the length times the width times the thickness or the height. So let's see if we can't fill in some of those for this particular problem. That's going to be 62.4. The width here is going to be 6. Another dimension is going to be 4. So 6 times 4 times the height. I'm going to call the height our dy. Okay. Let's multiply that all together. So 24 times 62.4. Gives me 1,497.6 dy. So that's the force required to move one plate, one small little slice here. But let's figure out the distance. How far do you have to move that? Well, I guess it depends on where you're at. We're going to pump this over the top edge. So let's label our diagram a little bit. So if this is the origin, 0, 0, what's this point up here? What's its coordinates going to be? A little higher. 0, 4, right? That's all right. Appreciate you helping out. Now how about this one? What are the coordinates here? zero y, right? We don't know exactly how tall that is. It was just an arbitrary slice for me. Why do I need to know that? Well, I need to know that because I need to figure out this. I need to figure out the distance. How far is that between the top and that slice? How far am I going? 4 minus y. So the distance is 4 minus y. So I think I got everything that I need here. 
I've got the force and I've got the distance. Nice. So let's figure out the work done in moving that one slice of water all the way up to the top so that it can dump out. So work for one slice is going to be W equals force times distance, which is going to be 1497.6 uh, dy times 4 minus y. So that's the work done in moving one such slice. Now I can rearrange that a little bit as I integrate it. Integration really adds up the work in moving all such slices, not just one. If you're being really careful, this would be part of a Riemann sum. You take the limits, etc. But that's moving one slice. We need to move all slices in order to empty this. In fact, we'll do two two such problems. Um, because it says how much work is done pumping the water out of the top edge in order to empty it. Um, all the tank and half the tank. Let's start out with all the tank. So that's going to be 1497.6 times 4 minus y dy. If I want to empty all of it, What should, my, what should my limits of integration go between? Between what and what? Zero to four. All the way. So start at zero and all the way up here. Or start at four and all the way down here. Either way. What if I just wanted to empty half of it? So I'm still going to have the same constant, 1497.6, same integrand, 4 minus y dy. But now I'm only going to empty half of it. Good. 2 to 4. And make sure that you go 2 to 4, because you don't, if you're emptying this, we're not going to empty it out from, you know, 0 to 2, we're not emptying out the bottom half, you're going to empty out the top half. So 2 to 4. All right, we're going to cheat a little bit here and finish this one up with numerical integration. I'm hoping that this kind of a problem is not that hard that you could, if you wanted to or needed to, finish it up by hand. But like I said, we're going to cheat and finish this one up with numerical integration. I get 11,980.8. Um, you know, I've made a mistake here. Can you see what my mistake is? Back in my labeling of units, I shouldn't use meters here because I'm using density in pounds. So I should should write uh, this distance should be in feet because I don't want to mix up SI units with English units. So we'll have to make these all feet. If I make them feet as opposed to meters, then that'll be 11,980 Point eight foot pounds of work, and then likewise down here, I'm gonna do the same thing. Now, I'm doing half of half of the tank. Is it going to be half of the work? What do you think? Yeah, you end up carrying this a lot farther in total. So. Uh, if I'm just doing the top, it's 2,995.2, and again, it's foot-pounds. So, yeah, good job. So, we're going to do this a couple more times. This is a nice, friendly one to start with. It's friendly because 
the dimensions of this don't change with the height. The dimensions are fixed. And so when we came up with our expression for the force, it was just a constant force. The only thing that varied was the distance that you were moving that, and that was this expression here. But the force was constant. That's going to change in the next problem. But are we okay for this one? So problem 15-ish. All right, so that's a yes. Good deal. Let's look at problem number 19. And we're going to focus on the setup, problem number 19. It says an open tank has the shape of a right circular cone. The tank is 8 feet across the top and 6 feet high. How much work is done emptying the tank by pumping water over the top edge? Let's do some drawing here. So we're going to start out here and label this the origin, 0, 0. And let's label a couple other points. What's that point going to be right up here? What's its coordinates going to be? Not zero one. How tall was this thing? No, I think it was six feet tall, wasn't it? Yeah, six feet high. So that would be zero six. It's eight feet wide. So someone want to catch the door? No, it's not chat. Uh, thank you. All right. Uh, if it's eight feet wide. What are the coordinates here? Good. Four and six, right? Because over here would be negative four and six, giving you your eight feet. I don't need to go over there. This is good enough here. As before, we're going to take our slice. Our slice has to be horizontal, um, has to be parallel to the ground. So let's just take a nice even slice through here. I'm not going to. I'm not going to try and get fancy and draw a little curve here to match things. I'm just going to take a slice straight across. So let's put ourselves a little coordinate here. Let's concentrate on finding the volume of that one slice because the force required to move that slice is going to be the volume of that slice times the density. So just like the previous problem, we're just going to have to do a little bit more work in calculating some of those things. So problem 19, so the force is going to be the density times the area times the thickness. Area times thickness, that's going to give me the volume of this one slice. Density, density of water is 62.8. Five or 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. Foot cubed. It's a little bit less for uh, for seawater. For seawater, it's 62 pounds per cubic foot. It's not something I expect you to know. I'll uh, remind you of this when I give you these types of problems. Um, 62.4. What's the area of this slice going to be? When you slice through this cone, what's that area going to be in general terms? All right, dy is going to be the thickness. So that's our dy term right here. What's the area of that slice? There you go, bingo, pi r squared. You're slicing through a cone, so the intersection is going to be a circle. So pi r squared times the thickness. Does that make sense that we're going to find this area times the thickness gives us the volume times the density 
it gives us uh, the force. So we need one more thing to do. We need to figure out the radius. Well, let's put a general point up here, x and y. Our radius is just this distance right here. It's x. But what is x? Hmm. Well, we need a relationship here between x and y. And that relationship can come from this. y equals mx plus b. What do the m and the b stand for in this one? Slope and intercept. Good. So, Tina, what would be the, the, the y-intercept in a problem like this? Some help? What's the y-intercept here? For the line that runs along this side. The y-intercept is 0. So b equals 0. What's the slope here? Yeah. So height divided by the width. Rise over the run. 6 over 4, or better yet, 3 over 2. So that tells me the equation of this side, right? It's going to be y equals 3 halves x plus 0, but I don't really need the plus 0. Let me remind you why we're trying to find this equation. We're trying to find that equation so that I can find an expression for the radius. I know the radius. The radius is x. That's how far it is from the center to here. So I can take this and solve for x. What does x equal? Somebody said it? Ronnie? What's x? Yeah, 2 thirds y. Yay. And that's what I needed. See, it's not enough just to put in an x here, right? 62.4 times pi times x squared dy. What about our setup reminds you that, okay, we can't have an x here? Is there something about our setup that says eh, x isn't the right variable? Yeah, you're going to be integrating dy. That dy term is very helpful. It's a reminder that... Everything has to be in terms of y. So 62.4 times pi times 2 thirds y squared dy. All right, so 2 squared is 4. 4 times 62.4 is 249.6 pi over 9 y squared dy. Whew. Now, the integral is not going to be too bad, at least so far. It's just a y squared term. We do still have to account for the distance. The tricky part was getting this expression for the force. So I'll pause here for a second if there's something you'd like uh, explained a little bit further. We've got the force. What's the last part we need in calculating the work before we set up our integral? One more time. Limits of integration. We'll get to that in a minute. Right, we're going to need those. But there's one more thing we're going to need as part of this calculation distance. Good. So the distance. How far am I moving that slice? So let's put on one more coordinate here. That coordinate would have coordinates of 0 and y. How far am I moving that? That's our distance right there. So let's 
sketch that in. Bless you. That's our distance. Can someone put that into a formula for me? What's that going to be? Donnie? 6 minus y. Good. 6 minus y. That's our distance. Six minus y is our distance. Together, force times distance is going to be our work. We'll add up the work done by all of those different layers. So, uh, work done moving one slice. Work equals force times distance. The force was 249.6 pi divided by 9 y squared dy times 6 minus y. We'll clean that up a little bit. Uh, move the constant out front, distribute the y squared, and I'll get the integral. So you put the 249.6 pi over 9, and then 6y squared minus y cubed. Now there's a couple problems that you could ask, but in this one in particular they ask how much work is done in emptying the tank by pumping water over the top edge. So if we're pumping water over the top edge and we want to empty the tank, what should be my limits of integration? Thank you. Zero to six. So, zero to six. Mm. Nice. Nice. How's the setup on this one? What units are you going to end up with when you finish it all up? Well, let's see. This was in feet again, right? So, something in terms of foot pounds would be your final answer. Problem number 18. We got one or two more problems left here. Um, well, at least at least two, 18 and 22. Um, I'd like to get through these and then take our break. Uh, I know you're probably anxious as I am to take a break. Uh, let's see what we can do about finishing these up. Problem number 18, a little bit friendlier. We're going to pump water out of a cylinder, which is nice because the cylinder is going to have a uniform shape. And that cylinder, uh, the bottom of the tank is 10 meters above the level of the stream. Also, we're going to actually have to fill the tank half full of water through the hole in the bottom using water from the stream. So let's draw ourselves a nice little picture try and uh, try and visualize this so here so we've got this tank and it's six excuse me it's it's 10 meters above, we're talking meters here? I just want to double check here. Yeah, we're 10 meters above uh, the level of the stream. So it's pretty high. It's about 30 some feet. 10 
meters. Some more trivia for you. Density of water in terms of SI units is going to be 9,807.6 newtons per meter cubed. Uh, newtons. Yeah. Well, newtons, newtons per meter cubed would be um, its density. Yeah. Well, that's force per density is force per meter cubed. Mass per volume. It's grams per centimeter. Yeah, grams per centimeter cubed. But I, uh, is that, we're using the right. Let's double check back here. Um, Mm -hmm. All right. Somebody asked Siri what the density of <laughs> density of water is in uh, SI units, and we'll go with whatever we come up with. Um, let me take a slice through my figure like we've done before, and we're going to figure out how much work is done moving that slice into position. So take a slice right through here now a big question that you're gonna to have to answer for yourself is where do you want to put the origin so so what what should the units be then yeah grams per centimeter but um, let's see kilogram One more time. It's uh, one kilogram times meters per second squared. Oh, that's a joule, isn't it? Or if you accelerate that to uh, one meter per second squared, that's a joule. Yeah. yeah. Mm, I'm sure I didn't get that at random. Where's uh, work done by constant force? All right, this is a little bit of diversion. Um, um, force cube. Let's stick with that for the moment. All right, uh, a big question that you have to ask yourself is, in this drawing, where do you want to put the origin? Do you want to put the origin down here? You want to put it here? It's up to you. Where are we going to put the origin? Want to put it at the water? All right, so this is 0, 0. That would make this point have what coordinates? 0, 10. And then up here, this point would have coordinates of 0 and y. All right, so we're going to go through the same motions that we did before. That is, the force is going to be the density times the area times the thickness. And that's going to be kind of consistent throughout all these problems. So what's the area going to be? Well, we know what the thickness is, I hope. What's the thickness? dy. Thickness is dy. The area is pi r squared. But I think we know the, the radius, right? Let's take a look here at the problem. Uh, 10 meters. Mm -hmm. uh, Do they give it? It's got to be in there someplace. Okay. So it's two meters. All right. So let me go. All right. So let's go with two meters here. Two meters. By the way, 
also in problem 17. Water weighs 9,800 newtons per cubic meter. Right. Okay. Well, I agree. I mean, I'm familiar with, you know, one kilogram or one gram per cubic centimeter is, is what I'm used to. At, at, that's at standard temperature and pressure. All right, so the area is going to be pi times 2 squared. And let's just leave the density as rho for the moment. So I'll leave that undetermined. Uh, but that's nice because we've got our expression. That's going to be 4 pi times rho times dy. So we really don't even need a value here. We can just deal with that later. Uh, the, the thing we have to be careful about is the distance. So when we move the water up through this pipe and then into the, into the cylinder, how far are you moving it? Well, it starts out down here, move it up through here, up to here. What's that distance? Um, actually, we can just call it y. Now what you're going to have to be careful of is your limits of integration. Your limits of integration are going to start from the bottom of this can, which is at 10, up to whatever height you're filling this to. So if you're filling it halfway, it would be to 15. If you're filling it all the way, um, I think that thing was, how tall was it? Let me just double check here. Um, oh, it's, oh, it's 5 meters tall. No, it's not 5 meters. Yeah, it is. Is it 5 meters tall? Four meters tall. All right, so um, so if this is four meters tall, let's fill in some some things here. This would be uh, zero and fourteen, and there's zero to ten. So there you go. So depending on your how fire how much you're filling it, y is going to vary between ten and twelve, or maybe ten and fourteen. But the distance itself is just y. Last but not least, let's set up uh, the work done in moving one such slice. Work done moving one slice. Work equals force times distance, which in our case is going to be 4 pi times rho times dy. Make up times y again. So 4 pi rho y dy. Now in problem number 18, we want to fill the tank half full. So half full. So I'll integrate 4 pi rho y dy. And I want you to put in the limits of integration here if you're filling it up halfway. Mm, not 0 to 12. Because y, the slice here, is going to start... The bottommost slice that you can take here is going to be down at the bottom of this can, or the cylinder. So it's going to be a height of 10 up to 12. Okay. Um, you know, it's not going to be perfect, but uh, I, did, I think I do want to stop here. And what I'll do is I'll just start uh, the next section with one last problem from this section. Does that work out? All right, so we don't have, we're not going to have four videos from tonight. We'll have three. Let's take a break here, and uh, I'll see you in ten minutes.